best to you. Can I help you, Granny? Sure can, Ellie. I must be getting old. This clothes basket is heavier than a bucket full of hogs' livers. <laughs> It's hanging. <laughs> I bet you little Jasper crawled in there to get warm. Oh, in tarnation is little Jasper. Mm. <laughs> Ain't he cute, Granny? I declare him another pussycat. This one's all broke out with spots. <laughs> this here little feller is what you call a jaguar. Where'd he come from? Where the doctor over to Zeus said he comes all the way from South America. Down Louisiana way. Nice country. He bring you home to win. He says, I got away with the critters. Well, you better get away with this one before your paw sees it. He's getting a crawl full of you dragging home them critters. Where is Pa? Out front, sold him shoes. Come on, little Jasper. I better hide you, baby. <laughs> Together, Pearl. <laughs> oh. My doggies, it's good to see you. It's good to be here. I thought I heard Pearl's voice. You did, Pearl. <laughs> <Mr. Granny. laughs> you old rascal, you, you're surprised us. How are things back home? Fine as frogs there. Why didn't you let us know you was coming? We'd met you at the airport. Oh, Daddy spoiled the surprise. Besides, so I didn't want to take Jethro out of school. And Mr. Drysdale offered his limousine and livered chauffeur. Uh, <laughs> thanks a heap. <laughs> Jed, get, give the chauffeur a tip. Come on, Pearl, come inside. Tell me all about it. Oh, oh uh, just a minute, young fella. Got a tip for you. Thank you, sir. Plant your corn early this year. Hey, <laughs> Pearl! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, man, it's good to see you. Well, tell us all about Jeffrey and getting married. Did you have a big fancy wedding in your parlor? Sure she did. Pearl's been planning that for years. It, it, it didn't quite come off the way I planned it. What happened? You know, I had Jeffrey all set to marry Albert Ledbetter, that tall spring bean of undertaker over to Ripley. Good steady fella, Al. Best undertaker in the whole county. Only undertaker in the county. Nice fella, too. Oh, Granny. I wish you could have seen the way he decorated my parlor. Well, you couldn't walk for the flowers. <laughs> uh, they weren't all strictly fresh, mind you, and uh, some of them still had the black ribbon, so... <laughs> oh, flowers is flowers. Well, never was one to waste nothing. <laughs> well, what happened, Aunt Pearl? Didn't Cousin Jethreen marry up with Undertaker? Stood him up. Lope with another man. <laughs> there goes my free funeral. <laughs> well, uh, tell me, Pearl, who'd Jethreen lope with? That drummer from Joplin, Jasper Depew. Why, he weren't no more than half her size. I reckon love ain't measured by a yardstick, Granny. <laughs> and they do look happy. Sent me a snapshot from Turnersville. <laughs> That old Al led better take it, Pearl. Jethreen stand him up like that. Took it right nasty, Jed. He backed his hearse up to the door and hauled away every single flower. Where did he take it? Straight over to Alverna Bradshaw's parlor. He up and married her daughter before them flowers could wilt. Well, never was one to waste nothing. <laughs> Hello, Jed, I gotta have... Hello, son. Ma! Come on, Jed. Jed, don't put me down. Get up. What are you doing home from school in the middle of the morning? Did you hear your ma was coming home? Uh, no, Uncle Jeb. They just found out over at school that I ain't got no certificate of health. What's that? That's something that says that I'm healthy. I'm say you're healthy. Now go on back to school. <laughs> you gotta have an examination first, Granny. Stick out your tongue. You're healthy. Get back to school. <laughs> Granny, I reckon he's got to be examined by a doctor. I've been doctoring better than 60 years. It's got to be a doctor that's what they call a M.D. 
What does that stand for? Mr. Doctor, I reckon. <laughs> well, I'm an MD. Mrs. Doctor. <laughs> well, maybe he ought to do like the school says, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, we don't know no doctors. Well, I know the critter doctor over to the zoo. Jethro's a human being, Ellie Mae. Thank you, Ma. <laughs> Why don't we ask Miss Drysdale? I hear tell she's been to every doctor in Beverly Hills. Hey, Marie the maid told me about a doctor she's been going to for seven years. He must be a crackerjack. What's his name? Uh, let me think. Uh... Commences with a D. I got it. Dr. Twombly. Twombly don't commence with a D. Well, doctor does. <laughs> you run upstairs and, and take a bath and put on some clean underwear and, and get over and see him. Okay, Ma. I sure hope Dr. Twombly don't examine his brains. <laughs> is progressing most satisfactorily. Tomorrow, same time. Yes. Well, thank you, Dr. Twombly. And don't worry about the regression into infancy syndrome. You'll overcome this desire to be a baby again. Yes, sir. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> thank you. You thought you had some beauties, Dr. Freud. <laughs> oh, Doctor, there's one more patient. His name is Jethro Bodine. This is my golf day. You know I don't take patients after 11 o'clock. He was referred by Mrs. Drysdale. Oh, all right. Call Dr. Black and tell him I'll meet him on the golf course at 12.15. Yes, Doctor. Doctor, this is Jethro Bodine. Howdy. How are you, Jethro? Uh, make yourself comfortable on the couch. Right here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, like to tell me all about yourself and why you're here? Well, why I'm here is that I can't go to school till I get examined by you. <laughs> Just lie back and relax. Well, thank you. <laughs> now, suppose you tell me about this problem you're having at school. Well, my biggest problem is staying awake while the teacher's talking. <laughs> well, that might be nothing more than a benign subconscious rejection of authority represented by the teacher. It doesn't mean that you necessarily lack interest or capability or intelligence. Above all, you mustn't let this cause you any distress. Together, we will probe into the underlying causations and... <laughs> so good to feel needed. <laughs> Critter just scared of living daylights out of your Aunt Pearl. Now, oh, something tells me it just might be yours. I'm awful sorry, Paul. I plumb forgot I hit him in Aunt Pearl's dresser drawer. He just loves to get in betwixt clothes and snooze. Give me a terrible start, Ellie. I thought it was a fur muffin. Started to stick my hand in and he bit right down on it. Oh, I let out a yell, I can Pearl, tell you. I hear you clean down to the cement pond. You're yodeling better than ever. Granny, I was yodeling. I reckon a quarry critter like this ought to be outside instead of in the house scaring folks. Oh, leave her, stagehead. I'm commencing to like her yodeling. <laughs> oh, Granny. Has anybody heard anything of Jethro? He's been at that doctor for a good spell now. Ah, rest easy, Pearl. There's a lot of boy there to examine. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> now, Jethro, during your few waking moments, you have managed to tell me that your mother's a widow. Oh, yes, sir. I'd like you to tell me all about your mother. I'm very interested in her. And don't blame you. She's pretty. That's fine. Now then, Jethro, what's your relationship to your mother? I'm her son. <laughs> yes, I know that. But how do you feel about her? Do you like her? Oh, I sure do. She's a dandy, huh? And does she ever give you hostile emotions or aggressive tendencies? Well, she would if I asked her for him. <laughs> yes, well, suppose uh, that we talk about your father. Do you remember him? Oh, yes, sir. Well, he used to take me hunting. Taught me how to shoot with a rifle when I was just a little feller. Oh, you were good buddies when he was alive. Oh, yes, sir. Did you miss him? I never shot at him. <laughs> well, suppose you tell me about the rest of your family. Do you have any brothers? Uh, no, sir, but I got a sister that's got one. <laughs> well, that would be you, Jeff. Uh, no, sir. Uh, her name is Jeff Rain. <laughs> Why don't you go back to sleep for a while? <laughs> oh, Granny, wait till you see what all's in here. Every last thing you asked me to bring back from the hills. Oh, bless you, Pearl. Baku root. Pearl, you'll never know how I needed this. When you simmer this in slippery elm tea, it is first rate for chills and fever. <laughs> Dried crawdad tail. <laughs> Big rascals, too. When they is ground up to powder, you can't beat it for easing headaches, curing warts, and seasoning sauerkraut. <laughs> Catfish whiskers. Oh. Soap water. Oh. Dogwood bark. Oh. And the skins from three full grown newts caught at midnight under a full moon. <laughs> you ain't gonna believe this, but you just can't buy these in Beverly Hills. That's a fact, Pearl. Jethro drove me up to five big department stores out here, and not one of them had a newt skin. <laughs> When it comes to charms and potions, you might just as well not commence unless you got the midnight, moonlight, caught, fully grown newt. Earl, did you do all this gathering yourself? Oh, no, no, Jed. I had company, especially for the midnight, moonlight, newt hunt. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody I know? Oh, three of the most marriageable men in the hills. Well, that'd be uh, Jack Cantrell, uh, widower Lloyd, and uh, old man Casey. Oh, he ain't so old. I declare, I had to watch out more for him than the newts. I'm surprised you didn't get married while you was back home, Pearl. Oh, I had plenty of chances, Granny, but I got sport living out here. So I'm going to hold out for one of them good-looking, snappy-dressing, money-spending Beverly Hills fellas. <laughs> Wild honeycomb. Honeycomb and Mountain Dew. Best thing in the world for Quincy. <laughs> Mountain Grove Black Sea. Nothing better for polices. Old George McQueen, he sent that to you. Oh, I'll take it anyway. <laughs> ah! Bah! Well, what the doctor say? Are you well? Are you healthy? I never did find out. But when that Dr. Twombly heard that you was my ma, that's all he talked about from then on. Talking about me? Well, he must ask a dozen questions about you. But, Jethro, I don't even know the man. Well, he sure knows about you. And he'd like you to come to his office to see him. When? Well, he says the sooner the better. And he's a good looker, too. Betcha Mrs. Drysdale told him about me. I'll hurry and put on my star-bought hair and my society dress. Jethro, this uh, Dr. Twombly a uh, very nice fella? Yes, sir. But he's awful nosy, though. Never stops asking questions. <laughs> sure, he's interested. But there's one thing about him I ain't gonna like. He's a messy writer. He is? Yes, sir. You know how Ma's always fussing at me for spilling ink in my writing book? Yeah. Well, he showed me one of his books, and Uncle Jed, it's the biggest mess of ink blots you ever saw. <laughs> Dolly, well, you're prettier than sun up on a Monday morning. Ma, that dress shines like a new tin can. Ma, I reckon that's just about the fanciest dress ever. 
Even the things that don't show is fancy. I got the truck waiting, Mom. Jethro, that truck's the mic breezy when you're wearing high society clothes and someone else's hair. <laughs> I I'm going in style today. I'll get the door, Ma. Howdy. At your service, Mrs. Bodine. Now, this is the way to live. I just hope that doctor's looking out his window when I drive up. All <laughs> aboard. Ain't no two ways about it. When it comes to style, nobody plows a deeper rut than Pearl. <laughs> Mrs. Bodine, how nice to see you. I'm Dr. Twombly. Bonjour, s'il vous plaît, I'm sure. <laughs> You obviously are a more sophisticated woman than I was led to believe. Merci, Miss Pa. Excuse me. Step over to the couch and make yourself comfortable. Oh, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Relax. Let's get acquainted. Don't you get the wrong idea just because I talk French. Oh, Dean, you don't. You bet I don't. <laughs> Here you are, Doctor, and I postponed your golf date until three. Thank you. Dr. Twombly? Yes, but I'm busy right now. I'm sorry, you cannot see the doctor without an appointment. I wouldn't count on that, ma'am. It might be a good idea for you to leave the room. Who are you? <laughs> Name's Jed Clampett, blood cousin to Pearl Bodine. <laughs> oh, good. It's all right, nurse. Mr. Clampett, I'm glad to see you. Or I shake your hand, maybe I better speak my piece. By all means. Sit down. I'd rather stay in, thanks, and I'll get right to the point. Back where I come from, we don't take kindly to anybody trifling with our female kinfolk. <laughs> but, Mr. Clamp, I... I take into account that this is a big city, and your ways are probably different than ours. When my cousin Pearl tells me she had no more than said howdy, and you commence pulling her to the settee. <laughs> my doggies, that's dropping a rusty bucket down my well. <laughs> Mr. Clamp, you don't understand. I do this every day. I'm a psychiatrist. Well, I'd try to get cured of that if I was you. <laughs> Guess you're liable to wind up bad hurt. Uh, let me explain and apologize for the mistaken impression. You can come out to the house, explain to Granny, and apologize to Pearl. I'd love to come to your house. I want to meet every member of your family. Well, that'll be fine. But keep a tight hold on your feelings. I reckon Cousin Pearl can look after herself, but I got a daughter, Ellie Mae, and I catch you making one move in her direction, you're gonna find yourself weighing about three bullets heavier. Pearl, drink the sassafras tea. I bolstered it up with a little Mountain Dew. <laughs> Calm you down. Thank you, Granny. Pearl, I wish you'd wear this thing or put it away. I keep thinking it's one of Ellie's critters. <laughs> a minute ago, I tried to feed it a saucer of milk. Pearl? You do something different to your hair? <laughs> well, Pearl, uh, Jethro and me have brought that Dr. Twombly home here so he could apologize to you. He, he, oh! No mirror in here. <laughs> I hope you didn't whoop him to where he's no good for shooting. How are you gonna shoot nobody, Granny? That's why I come in here first. You whooped him too bad, huh? I whooped him at all. How come? Poor fella's so sickly, he gotta have a nurse handy all the time. <laughs> Jethro, bring him on in here. Dr. Plumley, this here is Granny. 
I'm pleased to meet you, Granny. He don't look too sickly to whoop. <laughs> you want me to whoop him, Granny? You go look for some chores. What, for instance? Put some air in a truck tire. They won't hold no more air, Uncle Jet. Well, then let some out and then put some in. I never get to do anything I want to do. Somebody's always saying, do this, do that, put air in, take air out. I don't know. Hey, where's Ellie? She's out back running a new Jaguar around the yard. Well, uh, I'll go fetch her. I reckon uh, you, you'll you be safe with them. <laughs> Sit down, doctor. Thank you. So... You call yourself a doctor, do you? Well, I do hold several degrees. All right, doctor. <laughs> How do you cure warts? Warts? Yeah, warts. Well, dermatology isn't my field, but I assume electro-desiccation is still a preferred method. Eh. Oh, is there a newer method? Stump water, and lime. Mixed with ground up crawdad tails. Dobbed on with the leg bone of a buzzard. Just before the moon comes up. Think you can remember that? Well, I'll try. Mm -hmm. How do you cure Quincy? Quincy? Uh, tonsillitis. No, that wouldn't cure it. It's an inflammation of the pharyngeal area. I don't care what you call it, that wouldn't cure Quincy. Quick, what kind of poultice for rising in the ear? Poultice? What's asafinity for? Well, uh... How would you cure the vapors? I... What about the drowsies? Bacon joints, stone bruises, corns, dander, twinges, and proud flesh. Well, these things are outside my field. A doctor goes where he's needed. He don't just stay on his own land. Ah, you sit right back down. Remember what I told you? <laughs> hey, this here is Dr. Twombly. Howdy. How do you do? Are you the young lady with the new Jaguar? I sure am. You want to see it? Well, yes, I'm an enthusiast myself. Is it in the garage? Yeah, right in the yard. Come on. Now, you sit right there. And me, bring it in the house. A Jaguar in the house? Is it all right, Paul? Yeah, as long as you don't take it upstairs again. <laughs> Bonjour again, Doctor. Oh, Mrs. Bodine, I, I am so sorry my actions in the office were misconstrued. They was downright forward, but <laughs> if you want to court me proper, you can come into the parlor. Uncle Dan, looky here. How'd that happen? Well, I was blowing air into it like this here. <laughs> when all of a sudden, pow! <laughs> Pietro, I told you and I told you, use the pump. You always... Wash the tires when you blow them up by mouth. Okay, Ma. Hey, is he going to be my new daddy? <laughs> Me? I reckon that's up to him, Jethro. We do have a nice parlor for proper courting. Watch out, Pearl. Here comes Ellie and her Jaguar. Well, oh, goodbye, folks. It's been weird. Doctor, wait, wait. We, 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 got, we got a big couch in the parlor. As I suggest you get on it, all of you, I'll send someone over. <laughs> well, of all the... He, he run out on me. Ooh. Hey, Ma, you want me to catch him and tote him back? Let him go. Let him go. But, Granny, it might be my only chance to get a Beverly Hills doctor. <laughs> doctor, my foot. Unless Ellie brings home a six-foot duck. You ain't never gonna run into a bigger quack. <laughs> Snap! What a happy sound. Snap is the happiest sound I've found. You may clap, rap, tap, slap, but snap makes the world go round. I say it's crackle, the crispy sound. You gotta have crackle or the clock's not wound. Geese cackle, feathers tickle, belts buckle, beats pickle, but crackle makes the world go round. Now I insist that pops the sound. The best is missed unless pops around. You can't stop hopping when the cereal's popping. Pop makes the world go round. Snap, crackle, pop, rice krispies. The Beverly Hillbillies has been brought to you by...
Kellogg's. Kellogg's of Battle Creek.